Yeah, so this is your syllabus. So um, we are just going to have a quick revision of all the things. So what we have seen is in uh, last semester, you have studied about modulation. Why do we need modulation? We need modulation so that we can send signals for a longer distances. So there are two types of modulation. Basically, one is um, with continuous wave and one is with pulse. This is what you have studied in the last semester. This semester, what you have seen is um, also, also one more thing you have studied in last semester. The continuous waves means we are talking about any kind of analog signal. And um, so in that, what all things we have seen, if the variation is happening with respect to analog signals, that means your carrier is analog, your information signal is analog, your output that is modulated signal is analog, then we, then we are talking about the proper and continuous wave modulation or analog modulation. Then in this, what we have basically seen, in uh, analog modulation, mostly we go ahead with amplitude modulation and angle modulation, that is frequency modulation. Phase modulation is mostly used for digital modulation. In this semester, what we are studying, that in pulse modulation, the signal, carrier signal is analog, whereas the information signal is digital, right? So first thing what we do is, with the help of uh, analog carrier signal, we convert all our analog signals into pulses. We call it as a pulse modulation. So for that, what technique do we use? We use PAM, that is pulse amplitude modulation, pulse width modulation, and pulse position modulation. Pulse, modu uh, pulse uh, amplitude modulation, the name itself says, when the amplitude vary, whose amplitude is varying, carrier amplitude is varying with respect to pulse. That means now what variation will happen if the input signal is digital? Digital signals means ones and zero. Either signal is there or it is not there. So what amplitude variation will happen? Either signal amplitude will be there or it will be either different amplitude or zero amplitude, right? We call it as spam. When we talk about pulse width modulation, it's similar to frequency modulation, where if the signal says one, input signal says one, then information signal will have one particular frequency. When signal says zero, that time it will be having another frequency. So two frequencies like this, till four times we can go ahead with. And pulse position modulation is totally based on PWM. That is starting and ending of the pulse has been counted to go ahead with PPM. Once our signals are again converted into digital signals with the help or we can say into the pulse signals then pulse code modulation is required and then further different type of further modulations can be used during the transmitting part. So remember pulse code modulation is done once our signals are already converted into the pulses. Now, now to convert it into pulse, what we have seen, we have an analog signal as a carrier. We are having a digital signal that says ones and zeros. And now we want to convert everything into pulse. So the technique we are using is sampling theorem. In sampling theorem, what we do? We go ahead with successive sample points. On what basis are we deciding the successive sample points? Our main aim is that once the regeneration of signal happens, information loss should not happen. So for that, a frequency of the sample signal should always be greater than or equal to twice of the band limit or bandwidth. So automatically what will happen when number of samples are more. So when you re regenerate, naturally the reconstruction will be better. It's just like a graph. When the graph is smaller or graph is uh, thinner, naturally when the reconstruction happens, it is more precise, close to the original signal. That is what is happening. So when your sampling rate is higher than the, was higher than twice or higher than or equal to twice the bandwidth, of the, sig inf uh, the information signal, then naturally the sampling that happens is of good quality and reconstruction that happens is quite close to the original. Now, so what are the uses of uh, doing this sampling? We can convert analog signal into digital signal and digital signal into analog signal. 
So what we have discussed just now, same thing we are discussing, that we have an information signal here. Then we are doing sampling. You remember what is sampling with the help of Nyquist criteria or uh, Nyquist theorem, what we have done. The sampling that is happening here, these vertical lines are the sampling part we have done with respect to time should be greater than the bandwidth of the entire signal. So naturally when sampling is more, the information that we receive is more uh, precise. So like here you can see based on the amplitude of this particular signal point, we are making this step. So from this to another one, one step has been planned. So one step. Then from this second position to third position, another step has been planned. Why it is done like this? Because we are making a step size. We are giving a step. Now here, what happens if you go ahead with this? That at every point, now remember one thing, when you talk about sampling with respect to time, we are talking about only with respect to time. We are not talking the amplitude. So whatever amplitude we get, we just make it a step size. So when we reconstruct, we will just um, join all the tips of the steps and we will reconstruct. You can see the difference between this image and this image. You can see reconstruction and getting this image is very difficult. So for that, what we do? We go ahead with some more techniques. Okay, first thing what we will say, this process, what we have done is used for PAM, PDM and PPM. We will not talk about, talk about PCM right now. We will talk about PAM, PDM or PWM or PPM. Fine. So what we have seen, PAM is basically with respect to amplitude of the signal. PDM is with respect to the width of the signal. PPM is actually the position of the starting and ending of the P, uh, PWM or PDM. And based on this, this pulse position has been designed. Now here, we have seen for PAM what has happened. We have seen only amplitude, the amplitude of the information signal. And the, after converting into pulse, now we are using it for the pulse strain. So naturally, the output that we have got is having a pulse strain and it's also having the amplitude of the information signal. Now, this can be done both ways. Either we can shift it, um, we can just add a bias and we can uh, shift the zero uh, reference point, or you can go with both positive and negative. So we can have both. With pulse width modulation, what we have seen that depending upon the width, the duty cycle is been utilized. So you can see when 100% duty cycle is there, entire width has been used. When it is 80%, the T on and T off is, you can see T off is smaller than T on. When it is 40%, you can see T off is greater than T on. If it's 50%, they both are equal. So uh, this is the main thing. There are a few more points that we will be discussing as we move on. Now, this is the block diagram of digital communication system. In uh, digital communication system, what are the main things we have seen? First thing, uh, information has to be sent, then information will travel, and then information will be received. This entire thing we are talking with respect to digital communication system. Now, when I talk about digital source, just now we have seen, we have converted our analog signal into digital signal. Then with the help of PCM that we'll be discussing soon that we are just going ahead with source and code. We have give, converted those um, voltages into codes. Then to where it has to be sent, the address has to be added in the beginning and ending of the uh, entire information. So we call it as encoder. Then uh, we are using different modulation techniques so that the transmission happens noise-free or no, with less noise. Now we know, we know the channels, we are using various channels depending upon uh, the distance, what type of frequency we are using and what is the application. Accordingly, that channel will be used. Now we know that in channel, natural noise will automatically get added. So when the signal is demodulated, we have to see that the information is with minimum noise. Again, we will remove all the encoder coded uh, what we have added so that we can get the original information. Then in source encoder, we will be just taking out those pulses, convert it into voltage and then back to the signal. So this entire process happens in the digital communication system. Now, if the noise that gets added, we know how does it affect? It affects the amplitude of the signal. And because of that, we can hear that humming sound or the visual is not clear. 
So uh, signal to noise ratio is very important here. Our main aim is signal to noise ratio should be equal to or greater than one. The reason is we want signal to be more and noise to be less. So here they have given a small example that if they, like you can see the spike of noise is there. If this is the original signal, if this noise gets added, the entire output will be with the noise. Same way in digital signals, what happens if the noise gets added, you can see there is not much difference between the uh, received signal. So that is the reason digital signals are being preferred over analog signal, because when noise gets added into the analog signal, it becomes a part of the signal. And in digital signal, we have option of using different filters and remove the noise as it is attacking onto the amplitude and digital signal is not about amplitude. It's about uh, width or it's about the position. So because of that, what happens? It's easy to restore the digital signal and noise is less. That's the reason digital signal is preferred over the analog signal. Now here, signal to noise ratio, once again, we will talk about this, that how signal to noise ratio affect the output. But if the noise is less and signal is stronger, then it's easy to remove the noise from the uh, received signal. But if noise is weak and sig noise, uh, if, sorry, if the signal is weak and noise is more, they merge together to become one piece and removing and noise out of signal is difficult. So this is signal to noise ratio. Now here, we were talking about here. Now we will go, get back to the point we were discussing. Uh, we were discussing about this point. So here what we have seen that the this was the information signal. It was been sampled, converted into pulses. And then now we want to reconstruct it. We can see here, if you compare both the diagrams, especially which is before filter and after filter, you will find we will not get the perfect output in this case. So what is what should be done for that? We will be taking care that one thing we are taking care is sampling. Sampling should be done in such a way so that the sampling rate is higher than the bandwidth. That is the first point you have to take care. Now, second thing what you are taking care when you are um, finding out the voltage levels at that time, there are a few things you need to see. If you see that, if you compare this green line and the red line, you can see if I draw a line here, this entire information is getting lost. That we call it as a quantization noise. Now here, what we are doing, we got a signal, we have done the sampling. After sampling, we have done the quantization. What is quantization? Quantization is the voltage levels that we have provided wherever the sampling has happened. And then when reconstruction is happening, we have um, we have just joined all the uh, tips of the um, step steps and we have made reconstructed the signal. And we came to know, no, we are not getting the perfect signal as it was being sent. So what we have to do, we have to increase this quantization level. So what is quantization level? Quantization level is this voltage, this green lines that we have given. So after the sampling has been done, we will decide the voltage level for it, just depending upon where the sample has been reached with respect to original signal. And when we find that the signal is getting lost because of quantization noise, we will increase the quantization level. That means we will make graph more finer. That means if you are taking one centimeter as a scale, we have made it as half centimeter or we have made it 0 0.05 like that. We are just making it more precise. We are increasing the quantization level. So the same one centimeter is now 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 like that. That means it has become more finer, more smaller. So we call it as more number of levels are been added between zero to one centimeter. So we call it as quantization level. The advantage of quantization level is the uh, precise output can be reconstructed out of it. You can see the first image, then there was only one pit. And uh, the sampling, you can see here, there is a sampling noise. Here is a sampling noise because signal got lost. In the same image, you are increasing the quantization level. You can see the loss part has reduced. This from zero volt to five volt, whatever was getting lost is being reduced because now it is getting converted to um, it has been become half because this this part we have added here. 
So now what we do when we do pulse code modulation that we have seen in the very beginning after PAM, PWM and PDM, PPM, we have done pulse code modulation. Now here the pulse code modulation plays a role where we are converting our signals into digital. So you can see when uh, it is zero to five, we call it as zero. And when it is going from for five volts or more than that, we are calling it as one volts. Now, same thing we are doing. Now, this is, this is uh, sorry, this is 2.5 basically, and this is five. So zero to 2.5 has gone into two quantization level. So same zero can be represented as zero, zero and zero one. And from uh, 2.5 to 5, it has become 1, 0, and 1, 1. So naturally, we have made it more precise. So number of uh, bit used is more. You can see here only 0 and 1. That is 1 bit. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. They are 2 bits. Quantization mm -hmm. level has increased. Them. They are, uh, it has become better. Precise. It is more precise to the uh, reconstructed output. Now, if you go for the 3 bit, 3 bit means you are taking 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So same 0 to 2.5 is now 1, 2, 3, 4, right? We have made it into 4 and 4. Same 0, which was there as 1 bit, has become 0, 0 and 0, 1 for 2 bit. And 0, 0, 0 to uh, 0, 0, 0, 1. Then 0, 1, 0 and then 0, 1, 1. So we have made it as 3 bits there. So the quantization level has increased. That has improved the um, quality of your reconstructed signal. We call it as quantization. So one small example is shown here. That is, as you increase the quantization level in the same voltage level, your graph becomes finer, more smaller, and reconstruction is better because you are not losing. Quantization noise reduces as you increase the level of quantization level. This can come as multiple choice question. Now here, then uh, we have seen that we have done the inquantization and we have made our reconstructed signal better. So what we have used that time, we have used a fixed uh, step size. Step size is from one uh, lowest point to second point, then third point and fourth point. You can see they all are a fixed size. So in this, the problem here was happening that here you can see the difference between red and blue this quantization noise. Many places you can see this quantization noise is happening. So uh, here to uh, avoid that or to improve this, uh, first thing is what we have seen when the step size used is fixed. We call it as a uniform quantization. Now to remove that noise, what we are doing, we are just changing the step size. We are varying the step size depending upon the difference between two steps. The advantage what we get is then it, uh, your quantization noise is reduced with that because the step size keep varying depending upon the signal. So these were the few things that we have seen was necessary to convert our signal into digital signal, to convert our analog signal into codes, PCM, pulse code modulation. So till that point, what, so what we have seen, we have got an analog signal, we have got an analog carrier, right? Now we have converted that information signal into ones and zeros, and we are using carrier. And then with the help of that, with the respect to amplitude, their position, their width or frequency, we have got a digital signals. That digital signals we converted into codes with the help of quantization and sampling. So now we have pulse coded signals. Now these pulse coded signals can be transmitted through modulator. Now, there are different techniques that are used to transmit this signal. One is uh, ASK, that is um, amplitude shift keying, where again the amplitude is varying based on one and zero. The amplitude of carrier is changing depending upon the input signal. Then we are having FSK where frequency shift keying is there, then uh, where the frequency keeps changing with respect to ones and zeros. Then comes PSK, that is phase shift king, where the phase keeps changing depending upon one and zero. So uh, in ASK, basically amplitude is varying. In FSK, basically frequency is varying. And in PSK, phase is varying. So with the same information signal here, what we are doing? Now we have got the pulse train with us, right? Now when we are sending this digital data, 
and modulation is happening then the remember again you can see the look of the signal is again analog but these analog signals are changing themselves to one uh, based on one and zero and thus the frequency amplitude and phase shift is happening now what is ask just now we saw there can be two uh, total four types so four signals can be sent at a time so you can see here that when zero is there the amplitude is zero or amplitude is some other amplitude a smaller value when it shows one the ca in carrier only the same carrier frequency is being passed right then comes zero either it can be zero that is no uh, carrier or it can be some other carrier that gets added to it so that is how the in ask two different amplitudes amplitudes are uh, we get that is either zero or one or some other value lesser than the original amplitude and original amplitude so this is how ask works now here an example we have shown that if the sinusoidal wave is 2 pi 40 right now here what happens uh, the modulated carrier can be displayed either with zero or with some other frequency now how does it happen you are sending a carrier signal and you are sending the information which is in a digital form they merge together and they give you ask signal or it is also known as ook that is on off key this also comes as a multiple choice question then um, here uh, ASK, basically the derivation you have to prepare where you have to show that a sinusoidal wave which is used by the carrier is A cos 2 pi FCT. FC indicates carrier of a frequency. Now, if the input information signal is 1, the same in the carrier is being passed. But if it is 0, then nothing passes. So how it happens? Uh, that's what it has been shown. We have compared it with analog signal that how in analog signals, we get the uh, basic equation that we are talking about the carrier, this signal that we have got it. So this is the veto is a carrier, but when it comes to, as a modulated signal, how does it behave? So this we have already studied that we are having that in amplitude modulation, how the carrier was been varying. Same thing we are talking about here. That first we are talking about the, uh, if you talk about the output part, first we are saying that the amplitude of the carrier totally depends upon this digital signal. If it is one, same is been transmitted. But if it is zero, something else can get transmitted or even zero will get transmitted. So uh, here we have taken that um, our ASK, this is the basic equation, amplitude shift king. How we got this equation? From the analog signal, we have got this information. That is what is saying. And since we are talking about only half part, we are um, not taking the entire um, uh, amplitude modulated signal. So now only half part we are taking. So it is coming as A by 2, where A is the total amplitude from the upper half to lower half. But we are talking about only half of it, so we are calling it as k by 2. Okay, so mathematically, amplitude shifting has become Vm plus uh, 1 plus Vm t a by 2. How we got 1? That is what we have seen here, that we are taking 1 for, um, because our amplitude has both the amplitudes, so we are talking about both the amplitudes. 1, which is, now if you see 1, when this input signal says one, nothing is getting affected. Everything is transferred as it is. But when it says zero, that time either it will be represented as zero amplitude or it will be represented by some other amplitude. So we are representing it with this Vm A by two cos omega Ct, where this um, amplitude will change this entire amplitude of the output, which is zero, if it is zero, no problem. If it is not zero, then whatever amplitude is there, it will be passed on. So here we are talking about plus one as, let's con uh, consider plus one as logic one and minus one as logic zero. Then if we are talking about logic one, then we know that um, information will pass as it is. The carrier will be passed directly from your logic one or one of your um, um, a digital signal and it, nothing changes in that 
as it is, it will pass on. So the output we have got is A cos omega CT. Now, if it is zero, then what will happen? Then the voltage, that is uh, the input voltage is minus one. Here it was plus one, then we give come minus one. Then minus one can give us. Now here it can be minus one, it can be minus 0 0.5, depending upon whatever we are considering logic zero as. It can be any voltage less than logic one, anything. So then accordingly, we will get the output here. Here we are considering it is one volt. So we got one minus one as zero. If it was say uh, 0.5 or say 0.75, accordingly here the output would have been 0.25 A by two. So naturally you can see the amplitude has reduced by 0.25. Like this, it will be uh, coming by. And then for if we talk about FSK, very clearly we are using two different carriers so that when the output comes, both the carrier is passed on. One indicates one particular uh, pass, uh, this uh, frequency that is I second one, the second um, uh, graph that it is showing that is in green in color, that is passed when one is shown by the digital input signal. And when it is showing is at zero, the other frequency is passed. So we get the combination of one, zero, zero, one. Mm -hmm. So we get both the frequencies at the output, we call it as FSK. So here also we can go ahead with four various frequencies with the combi, since we are converting into binary code, zero, zero indicates something else, zero, one indicates something else, one, zero indicates something else, and one, one indicates and some other frequency like this, four frequencies can go at a time with the combination. Now, here also how we are going, we are having two carrier, right? We are calling one, we are naming that one frequency should pass when the digital input says binary one, other frequency should pass when we say binary zero. So that is how the equation gets created. Then the difference between the uh, two frequencies. Now, if you can see here, if I talk about one, we you know as it is, it has gone, no frequency differences there. But if I talk about zero, the difference between, if I call this second one as a reference value, then the difference between this blue and green or between the second frequency and the first frequency, we are calling it as del phi. This del omega or del phi will indicate the frequency shift that is happening in the original carrier signal. And that has been traced out and we call it as a, a frequency um, deviation. Now, if the FSK or binary FSK, they are same, is one, then we call it as a mark frequency. If it indicates a zero, we call it as a space frequency. Remember, both types, we are having wave frequencies, but different frequencies. So then if you talk about uh, PSK, PSK, we know that uh, basically a binary sequence data has been given in the balance modulator. Balance modulator merges both of them the carrier wave and the binary shift. So what happens, the carrier changes itself with the help of binary sequence that it has received. And we get a BPSK, remember? Binary PSK, binary ASK, binary FSK, they are same as the ASK, PSK, and FSK. Now, when you talk about uh, PSK, here also we will do the same thing. If it, the binary code says zero, zero, we are giving one particular frequency. Uh, of a one particular phase, if it says one zero, the phase of that particular voltage is different. If you say zero one, phase is different. If you say one one, the phase is different. So whenever there is a switch over from one, uh, one to zero, then naturally what we get is a phase shift at different angles.